Our species, Homo sapiens, is about 200,000 years old. By evolutionary standards, that makes us relatively young. But based on what we know from the fossil record, of all the species that have ever lived, almost all of them, more than 99% eventually became extinct. How much longer will our species survive? Another 200,000 years? 500,000? A million years? Our ultimate fate depends in part on what happens to our planet. Eventually, another asteroid, like the one that killed the dinosaurs, will come crashing down from space, darkening the sky with debris. A big enough impact would make it impossible for plants to grow, leading to a cascade of extinctions that would take our species out along with many others. Or perhaps our demise will come from the eruption of a supervolcano, like the one lurking beneath Yellowstone, fueling its geysers and hot springs. Or maybe our continued population growth will simply overwhelm the finite resources of our planet. Life on Earth will go on, no doubt, but not necessarily for us humans. One way to avoid such a fate would be to spread out beyond Earth, venturing out into the galaxy the way our ancestors spread from our birthplace in Africa. Colonizing other planets would make it more likely that at least some of us would survive should there be a catastrophic disaster here on Earth. And the more places we occupy, the better the chances that our species will survive for a long time to come. Science fiction is filled with stories of people traveling on rockets and living on other planets. As an evolutionary biologist, I approach this idea not as science fiction, but as a real possibility for the future with technological challenges and biological consequences. As we speak, the first steps towards creating a human colony on Mars are already underway. There are a number of reasons why Mars might be a good place to begin our efforts at becoming a multiplanetary species. For one thing, as planets go, it's not too far away. It'll take about seven months to get there. We also now know that there's ice trapped in the soil, so we'd have a source of water. Some aspects of Mars make it familiar for people coming from Earth. A day on Mars is about the same length as a day on Earth, only 41 minutes longer. Mars even has seasons much like on Earth. It does get a bit chilly, though. The poles can reach minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. But a nice summer day near the equator, the temperatures could be in the 80s. The first manned missions to Mars could come sooner than you might think. NASA is planning a manned mission to Mars in the 2030s. Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, is aiming for 2024. Now, these first expeditions will be round trip journeys, so astronauts will spend some time on Mars and then travel back to Earth. But if our goal is to create a colony that can sustain the human species, eventually people will need to spend their entire lives there. And perhaps most importantly, they will need to reproduce. Living on Mars is going to be challenging enough without bringing babies, children, and pregnancy into the mix. For one thing, Mars has about one-third the gravity of Earth. That means that a person that weighs 150 pounds on Earth would weigh just 57 pounds on Mars. We also know from experiments on pregnant mice exposed to simulated microgravity that pregnancy complications are likely to be a lot more common for women living on Mars. Pregnant women also experience bone density loss as calcium from their bodies is transferred to the growing baby's skeleton. Astronauts experience bone density loss as well, as the reduced force of gravity means there's less force on the body, weakening the bones. Having brittle bones would be dangerous for anyone on Mars, but for pregnant women, having brittle bones might make it less likely that they'd even survive childbirth. But perhaps the most challenging part of living on Mars will be exposure to radiation. <laughs> 
space is filled with all different sorts of radiation, from ultraviolet rays to X-rays, cosmic rays, and high-energy solar particles, which, thankfully, we don't have to worry about much on Earth because we have a thick atmosphere and a magnetosphere that together form a protective barrier around our planet. Mars has neither. So radiation from space hits its surface at nearly full strength. A person who's born on Mars grows up there and lives an average human lifespan of about 80 years would be exposed to more than 5,000 times the amount of radiation during their lifetime as would a person who lives the same amount of time on Earth. All this radiation is a big concern for anybody, but uh, people living on Mars, they'll have to find a way to deal with it in ways that we're not having to worry about here on Earth at all. For context, the US Department of Energy sets maximum limits on the amount of exposure that a person who can be exposed to every year as a part of their job. One year of living on Mars would expose a person to 10 times that annual limit. Now, there might be some ways to minimize the radiation exposure for people on Mars. We can create underground structures and make sure that you always wear a spacesuit if you do have to venture out onto the surface. But even still, the radiation people are exposed to on Mars will be far greater than anything we're used to here on Earth. Imagine being a kid growing up on Mars. You could never really play outside, at least not without a spacesuit. You'd always have to eat your vegetables because the only food options would be hardy crop plants that can grow in the thin Martian soil. Think space kale. <laughs> at least sports would be interesting. You could kick a soccer ball a pretty good distance in reduced gravity, and they'll probably have to raise the height of basketball hoops because everyone can easily dunk. But there are some serious concerns about living and reproducing on Mars. Radiation causes damage to DNA, which is why you have to wear those lead aprons when you get an x-ray. That radiation damage to DNA can cause mutations, which can lead to cancer. That'll be a much bigger problem on Mars. But mutations in the cells that make sperm and eggs, well, those mutations can be passed on to your children. Now, we tend to think of mutations as a bad thing. But actually, they're an important part of evolution. All of the great diversity of life we see here on Earth can be traced back to a mutation that made an individual survive a little bit longer or have more offspring than their neighbors. That made those mutations more common in later generations. Mutations are a normal part of life. Here on Earth, Every baby that is born has about 60 new mutations in its genes. Because of all the radiation, babies born on Mars will have far more mutations, perhaps thousands. Many of those mutations will lead to problems, so miscarriages will probably be much more common for people living on Mars. But for those that survive, they'll be providing natural selection with a lot more raw material to work with. The chances are good that some of the mutations that will arise on Mars will make life a little bit easier for the people living there. Perhaps a mutation will arise that allows the body to cope with a little bit less oxygen. Something similar has happened here on Earth for people who live in mountainous regions like the Andes or the Himalaya. On the Tibetan Plateau, for example, there's 40% less oxygen in the air than there is at sea level. Yet native Tibetans do just fine. In part, that's because they evolved to have denser beds of capillaries, the blood vessels that deliver oxygen through the blood to the muscles, brain, and other organs. They can also dilate their blood vessels, expanding them so more blood reaches the tissues with every heartbeat. Perhaps a similar mutation will arise on Mars, allowing people to cope with less oxygen there, It'll be a valuable commodity. Maybe a mutation will occur on Mars that allows people to cope a little bit better with having to live in those underground structures. 
Here on Earth, organisms that live underground have adapted in all kinds of interesting ways. Many of them have lost their eyes, like blind cavefish. If we have artificial lights in our underground structures, we may still have need for our eyes, but perhaps we'll lose the ability to see long distances if we rarely venture out from those subterranean chambers and are mostly in confined spaces. Experiments on children suggest that those who spend more time indoors are actually more likely to become nearsighted. Another possible mutation that could be beneficial on Mars would be to have denser bones at birth. Because we'll lose bone density as we age on Mars, thanks to there being less gravity, starting off life with denser bones would be a real advantage, especially for women. It might make it more likely that by the time they reach the age that they start having children, they make it through childbirth without fracturing a pelvis. Perhaps a mutation would arise that would help the body to cope with all the damage from radiation. In our bodies, we use a pigment called eumelanin to help protect our skin from ultraviolet radiation. Other species use different pigments, like carotenoids, which give carrots their orange color. Some aphids, a kind of insect that's normally green, evolved the ability to produce carotenoids, and in the process, they became orange. Perhaps a new pigment will arise on Mars that helps people deal with radiation exposure and gives them a lovely new skin tone, too. But mutations occur randomly. So people living on Mars may choose to edit their own DNA directly. The technology to do so already exists. Using a technique called CRISPR-Cas9, we can take one of the DNA letters, the A's, T's, G's, and C's that make up the alphabet of the human genome, and swap it out for a different letter. Why wait around for a new skin pigment that can protect you from radiation when you can design one yourself? And the best part is, if you edit the DNA of a sperm or egg cell, well, those changes will be passed on to your children, who will pass it on to their children, and so on. Any change, whether it's from a mutation or an edited gene, that is beneficial will become more common in each generation. That's how natural selection works. Now, we tend to think of evolution as being a slow process because it occurs over generations. But because of all the radiation causing mutations on Mars, not to mention the possibility of making changes to those genes directly, evolution on Mars will be much faster than what we're used to. In just a few generations, we might see changes among people living on Mars that would take thousands of years here on Earth. Eventually, if we have people living on Mars, they may evolve to become different from the people living on Earth. One of the changes that could happen relatively quickly would be to lose the immune system. This could make the changes happen even faster. The reason is that there are no microorganisms on Mars to cause disease. So if we make an effort to try to prevent introducing microorganisms from Earth, we could create a place where no one ever gets the flu. You don't have to use sterile technique to perform surgeries. And deadly diseases like cholera and malaria would become distant memories. To do that, we could treat the journey from Earth to Mars as a sort of quarantine period. Anyone who shows symptoms of a disease could be treated before they arrive or not allowed to leave the spacecraft. Now, here on Earth, we're constantly facing new types of diseases, whether it's a new strain of flu or entirely new diseases like Zika. That's because there are microorganisms that were infecting an animal host that switch and start infecting humans. That won't be a problem on Mars, as long as we choose not to bring any animal pets or livestock. So unfortunately, that means no dogs or cats or hamburgers on Mars. But it's a small price to pay for completely eliminating all infectious disease. <laughs>
If people on Mars lose their immune system, it would be very dangerous, if not impossible, for them to ever survive a journey back to Earth. At the same time, contact between people from Earth and people on Mars could be deadly for the Martians. Enforced separation of people on Mars and people on Earth would mean that each population would evolve independently, accumulating differences over time. Something similar happens here on Earth for plants and animals that live on islands. Charles Darwin was inspired to develop his theory of evolution based in part on observations he made of finches and tortoises living on the Galapagos Islands. He realized that the ancestors of the species we see today had arrived on an island, become stranded there, and accumulated differences over time, adapting to the local conditions. Thanks to the powerful combination of mutation and natural selection, any individuals of a species that are isolated from one another will eventually evolve into distinct species. The planets in our solar system are much like the Galapagos Islands. And like tortoises and finches, people living on Earth and Mars will evolve differences as well, eventually becoming multiple distinct species. We may not stop at Mars. There are other places in our solar system that might be possible to colonize. Some of them include some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. Now, these are further away than Mars, making it more difficult to send people and supplies. But at least two of them, Europa and Enceladus, are thought to have water beneath their surfaces, a key ingredient for a human colony. The recent discoveries of exoplanets, planets orbiting stars other than our sun, suggest that habitable conditions may exist outside of our solar system. If we eventually come to inhabit multiple worlds scattered across the galaxy, over time, we may see the evolution of a plethora of new human species. So with all this in mind, should we go ahead and start establishing human colonies on other planets? Perhaps, but if we do, we should recognize that there could be unintended consequences for who our descendants become many generations from now. It's ironic, isn't it? Perhaps the only way to ensure the long-term survival of our species is to establish colonies on planets or moons. Yet doing so will cause us to evolve in ways that could change us forever. Thank you.